All right, let's see if we can manage to get this back on track. Oh, what is this? My chat window is normal now? What? <laughs> Hello, guys. I am here a few minutes early just to make sure everything is set up and working the way it should be. So if this is functional, I will I will get this show on the road here in about five minutes. Hopefully all my cameras are in working order. Let me go check my other uh, computer real quick. So, the sounds coming through don't think i have anyone here yet to confirm or not hey jesse hey thanks for sticking around i guess oh yeah i think i have i think i have everything all figured out my chat window is working as it should just like it used to so no more weird uh youtube window i have to deal with that's really odd technology uh, let me make sure everything is sh straight. Uh, you guys will have to bear with me just for a second as I, as I adjust everything here. I, uh, I've had a long day. Let's just put it that way. You know, the uh, world of amplifier repair never slows down. I mean, it's if a person wanted to make this a... Uh, seven day a week business they sure can i can tell you that right now without question um that the amplifier automotive amplifier repair world is very far and few between so uh yeah for anyone looking to be their own boss start their own business and you understand the flow of electrons one area you can do is amplifier repair because if there's something our lovely kids are doing nowadays is they are burning up their equipment kids sorry if i call them kids um i live in uh, central washington where i'm just surrounded by schools and college and so i uh yeah a lot of people around here so i'm just gonna wait a few minutes here we'll see how how many people pop up and of course if you have any questions please feel free to uh, put them in the chat bo chat box because i guess i can see a chat box now lovely uh, and I'm not sure if Lucas Zimmerman is going to be joining us today, but uh, Mr. Zimmerman, your M1U amplifier has a relay issue. So that whole time it's been gone is because of a relay issue. It's got to be because they uh, relays don't come on. So uh, let's. Uh... No drop frames. Am I still going? 80% kilobytes, 21. Am I still running? Good, good. All right, videos are running. Videos are running. All right, I'm just going to make sure I have everything in order. Um. Oh, you know what I'm going to need for today's stream is I'm going to need a scope. 
Uh, Rigol scope shortcut. That's what I love about this uh, Rigol scope is, I mean, a lot of your uh, digital scopes now have software, but you know, for being old like me, having technology like this is pretty cool when you can show your scope on a screen for everyone else to see. All right, there we go. We have a scope. Uh, thanks for taking the time with the video. Say hey, thank you, Jesse. It uh, it's very, it's a very hard to uh, find learning material on audio. I'm very pair. It is. And you know, uh, back in 20, uh, it was probably mid 2019 when I transitioned from a uh, vacuum tube tester restoration and repair to solid state um, electronic repair. That was the first thing I noticed was the lack of information. And I am going to point my finger to the manufacturers of uh, today's world. Oh, hold on guys. I have a uh, amplifier uh, delivery Maybe within two, two seconds. All right, guys, sorry about that. Uh, UPS is here every day that they deliver. So I uh, got a roofless, I think it's the 7500. I'd have to open up and see, but I have a, a roofless audio amplifier that just came in for repair. So, yeah. All right. 401. I think it's time to get going on this. Oh, amplifier repair. Information. Yeah. Uh, Perry was my lifesaver when it uh for amplifier repair. Perry and his information is the most invaluable information you can get uh for amplifier repair. In my opinion, he covers a lot of the basics of uh class a b and class d amplifiers so that's what i do recommend is checking out perry i i don't know it's been a couple years so i don't know if his database is updated i don't know where he's at on it but uh it's very very useful information so what we have here we have a scope let me get my scope what we have is a Tar Amps MD8K. And for all you guys that watch my channel, uh, you know that the, uh, whoops, the uh, Tar Amps 8K, the 12K, um, they have their particular issues. As I always say, uh, you know, loose inductors, burnt traces, all your common things. Um, and then, of course, you have some uncommon things. But that's the most typical thing for the 8K and the 12K. And even some of the probably... Um, some of the smaller, like the HD3Ks, will have failures just from failed ICs. But uh, typically you'll have broken inductors and burnt traces on the 8Ks and 12Ks. But this one, this board here, I've already got everything glued down that I normally do. I go through, except for the fans, huh? I go through and glue everything down because these are the first things that's going to pop loose on you. They'll break right at the board down here. And then you'll end up uh, resoldering, redoing that, fixing the leg. And then these capacitors will break off at the legs. Um, this resistor will snap off at the legs. Uh, what else? Uh, the drain traces will burn up over here. And then, of course, on the bottom side, the mm, you're going to have some drain traces that could burn up on the bottom. They don't tend to burn up on the bottom as much as the top. But as you can see, 
that's not today's case. Today's case is not about burnt traces or broken inductors. Today we're going to go over a different issue that you may or may not find or easily you may miss while um, either first diagnosing the amplifier if you're quoting it for repair or if you're just repairing it starting off you're going along getting the amplifier rebuilt there's something you need to check um, always before putting your time material and money into a board one thing, there's one thing here that controls everything, and I'm not sure if a lot of people know that this exists in Class D, I want to say Class D, um, in select Class D amplifiers, because not all Class D amps are, are processor-based. So you will find a chip right here. So this chip right down over here, let me get you guys a little closer on this good old 8K. I'm going to have to adjust my um, focus for you. If I can get this IC in to view here. All right. So The IC that I'm going to be discussing today is the PIC MCU. Uh, there's there's a few different terms for this particular chip. Let me just get my focus in for you guys here. I'm going to do my best to focus, I should say. Um, But it's this IC right here. This is a programmable chip. And that programmable chip, maybe, is this chip right here if i can get this thing to well hold on let me uh let me reload my browser here So the PIC that's used in this is that STM S003F3 IC. Now this IC here has its own programming on it. This IC here has its own programming. So you cannot take another PIC from a different board, say like a 12K, and put it on an 8K board and expect it to work. Um, it won't. Uh, so this PIC is responsible for basically this whole amp being functional. It does create the drive for the power supply. Uh, and that's what we're going to be aiming at today is what's going on with this board and how come I don't have any transistors in it? There's a reason. And we are going to get to that. So, the, uh, if I can manage my cameras here. All right. Uh, let's go, let's go way up here. But, as I was saying, if you notice, there's no power supply transistors. It's because, um, the very first thing I do when I diagnose amplifiers for quoting is I remove anything that's burnt, obviously, because you can't power an amp up if there's any shorts. Uh, this had a severely damaged 
power supply shorted out all the transistors were shorted luckily it didn't burn up the board um, the gate resistors didn't burn up the board anywhere uh, on, underneath the gate resistors so a person could really think quickly that there's no other issue because uh, there wasn't a lot of visible significant damage to the board but there always can be damage to the board get myself some power here and we are going to learn the ways of the PIC let me just make sure that I get a little blue light I do all right now PICs will do a health check and that's what we're uh, that's what normally what you see on uh, PIC based amplifiers you'll see it do a health check it'll scroll through its LEDs and stuff and what if it's good to go it'll start and if not it'll go into protect or shut down or whatever situation it uh, whatever situation it encounters um, so the PIC here drives a chip here and then this chip here supplies your pulses to the gate resistors of the power supply transistors so the power supply fails nine times out of ten it takes out the drive IC to it and all this does is it it takes the little low amplitude signal and brings it up to a voltage that it references to so it just really just steps it up it takes the load off the PIC takes the load of the transistors and that's why it'll burn up I can't get in close enough to show you, but it did burn up two small little traces here. Of course, the traces going out to the gate resistors. Um, so before I send a quote, I make sure that the PIC works. Because again, if that PIC doesn't work, then it doesn't matter what you do to the amp, you're not going to have an amp, functional amp. So, let me get the scope set up in a way that you guys can see it kind of clear. Um, let's see here. So there's two resistors here. They're pull-down resistors. Brings that signal back down to ground quickly. Uh, these are 1K resistors. So on one side of the resistor, you're going to see that scope just bump on that signal there. You can see that signal. So that's one side, which is good. And now we're going to go to the other side of the PIC. So you have two signals. And you'll see when we apply the remote power, and you won't even see it on uh, your screen because it's just too quick, but you get nothing. Just a real brief little blip in the signal. Um, so unfortunately, what that tells me is, there's Mr. Zimmerman. Uh, that tells me that one side of the PIC is damaged. Uh, hey, uh, I just mentioned your name there, Lucas. Um, your M1U has a remote issue, so um, it powers up, blue light, no no relays, uh, so your output inductors are switching with no relays. So uh, that's the issue. Um, yeah, I kind of had a feeling I'd see you, but uh, you can't quite see it. Right off, back over here, that M1U is. Uh, we, uh, we were running on the test bench today and I just, I, I do not know what's wrong with the relay circuit on that, but I, of course I will get it figured out for you. But as I was saying on this, we have a PIC drive signal for only one half of the power supply. You cannot run a power supply with only half a transformer run. 
it just won't happen. So again, I'll show you what it should look like on your scope. It'd be nice to do this and um, hit run stop. Let me see if I can, uh, uh, there it is. All right, so there's the signal you should see coming from the PIC going to both sides. I call them sides of the transformer, uh, one side and one side. You should see that same signal on both sides of the transformer. Um, I had to pull everything off all the way up to the drive IC because the drive IC was um, physically burnt up. So I had to pull that out because it was shorted. So that's why I'm checking my gate signal at the resistors coming from the PIC. So that short that happened over here goes through the gate resistors, comes back through the drive IC, and then from the drive IC, depending on how that shorts out, when it shorts out, shorts out the PIC. This PIC, guys, um, luckily, you know, since I do repair for tar amps, I can get these PICs. But if this was any other amplifier, I highly doubt, you know, I would be able to get a PIC for it. So uh, this is why the title states, you know, check this before you start repairing your boards because you could have a bad PIC. And regardless of the work you do, you could rebuild the whole thing. The amp will not run without a functional PIC. Now, let's see here. This is the MD8K. Let me go through my little bag of PICs here. I don't even know if I have a PIC for an 8K. I should, because I, I, I repair a lot of 8Ks. Aha, I have one MD8K PIC left. So <laughs> the tar amps will be hearing from me about getting some more ordered up. But this is a PIC chip. And just to give you guys an idea of if uh, you have an amp and you want to try to replace your PIC, just to give you an idea of the size of the pins of that PIC right there. That's how small that PIC is, if I can get it to focus. I mean, yeah, so just the tip of a mechanical pencil is still bigger than the leg of this PIC. So it does take some very, I don't want to call it specialized equipment, but you do need some micro soldering equipment and micro soldering skills to be able to do this successfully without burning up the PIC. I've done enough of them. I mean, it's over time it gets easier, but that PIC is uh, that's very critical and key. So now that we uh, know that we have a good drive on one side, but not on the other, you have to bear with me with the sound a little bit here. And that PIC comes off just that easy. Good P PIC, bad PIC. But again, that's uh, that's the brain of the amplifier. You uh, yeah, you kind of have to uh, take into consideration that. Uh, the amplifier's fault may not be 
something like a transistor or something. It could be a bad PIC. All this noise all around us here. And then I'm just pulling up all that lead-free solder. Does make for a uh, much easier installation. That's pretty cool to know I got that chat box back normal. <laughs> oh, the things I deal with. All right. This is where it can get interesting. So hopefully you all are doing good. Um, I know it's Friday. I typically don't do live streams this late on a Friday. But uh, I, I kind of got put behind this morning trying to get OBS set up. So I uh, had to get this a little later than anticipated. So there's the new PIC in place. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, I'm going to attempt <laughs> to solder i don't know if i can though i don't have my micro soldering uh station over here i think i've mentioned that before um let me think here a second how can i solder this uh how can i solder this and still manage to not get my big gray head in the camera. All right. All right. I'll be I'll be with you guys, trust me. This is just not the easiest thing in the world to do over here cuz I'm at the wrong bench. And man, I tell you what, small, small, and I'm here, I'm going to use my big old hacko iron. Yeah, watch. <laughs> uh, watch me fail. No, 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 I'm not going to fail. I'm not going to fail. I haven't had any amps blow up today, so I did lose a transistor, though. I had a uh, IRS 218-44IC uh, that was faulty on a cab 45 that I so kindly told myself that I, it, was, it was good and it wasn't. Uh, let's see. I'll shoot you a call here in a little bit. Uh, oh, yeah, no problem, Lucas. 
Um, it, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a very rare situation to have the, uh, relay circuit not work. So, I'm not sure why that relay circuit's not working. Give me two seconds, guys. I'm almost done here. You literally have to watch where the solder flows up that leg of, uh, of a chip when you're soldering stuff like this using a big iron. I say big iron, a big tip on an iron. Um, but if you put enough flux around the pins, it will uh, it'll solder right up just fine for you. Gotta love the uh, gotta love the uh, good old Amtec flux there, guys. Oh, I'm I'm gonna see uh, the normal supplier that I get my Amtec flux from was out, uh, so I got this and. I'm sure y'all have heard about fake Amtec flux, right? Well, check out the color difference. Uh, 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 yeah, okay. We'll find out. Um, yeah. So, PIC is installed. I'm just going to clean up the flux here so I can double check my soldering work. And then we'll find out if uh, we have drive on both sides going to the IC that drives the power supply. Since this is my last PIC for an 8K, I just want to make sure uh, without question that I have no solder bridges. None. Otherwise, this amp will be sitting here for a while, and I like quick turnaround times. Break out the old magnifying glass here. Yep, looks great. All right. I'm not going to get defeated by a PIC today. I've already gotten defeated by an M1U. And I'm not going to get defeated by a Brazilian board. That's for sure. I'm just going to check and make sure that I have a good solder job here. Maybe. Uh, yep, yeah, alright. Good, 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 good. Make sure this isn't shorted. Nice, nice, nice. Make sure my gates aren't shorted. Nice, nice. All right. Now, hopefully, if I my soldering skills are at least somewhat up to par, I should see um, gate pulses for both sides now. Nice. So now we have pulses on both sides. Woo. All right. So that's what I was talking about is if I would have gotten the power supply all rebuilt, check, you know, all put together, gate resistors in, 1404s in, and then I went to fire it up. And then if I didn't have rail voltage and then come to find out I had bad PIC. Well, I'm not sure how easily a person would be able to obtain a PIC first off, and then second off, 
um, if the person has the equipment to be able to desolder and solder on a PIC without destroying it. So it is pretty, you know, critical to, to know what your PIC is doing. I always recommend having a scope uh, for class D amplifiers. It's really hard to repair an amp without one of these to be able to check for this. Um, I'm kind of dealing with that with another little roundabout thing with another amplifier, but uh, you know you got to know what the amp's doing before you really start working on it. Told you, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right, Lucas. Um, yeah, uh, that's going to be an interesting for me to find. So just to let you know, Lucas. Uh, so um, that is the 8K. So now I am in a position where I can continue. And yes, I did quote it with a new PIC because uh, I knew it was bad. Um, I can continue to rebuild this amplifier knowing that I am going to have a functional amplifier when I'm done. Um, this 8K did not fail from a shorted output section or shorted or broken inductors. It didn't fail from that power supply failed um which who knows there's a there's 101 reasons why you can have a failed power supply usually it's a shorted output section um, especially on the korean boards um, but that's that so this is ready to be put back together Now these do use the 1404s, the power supply, gate resistors, gate resistors. Those in. 1404s but yeah so if uh of course remember if you guys have any questions please leave them down below uh what make that part repaired go bad um what made that part go bad so just to back up for that question there uh sean so what made this part that i just replaced go bad the driver i see right over here i see i think this is ic3 on this 8k i don't have the designators memorized so yeah ic3 um so the pic drives ic3 and ic3 drives the power supply so when you have a power supply short and you short out ic3 uh there is a chance for the pic to go bad because the pic drives ic3 so it's all a domino effect it's just how far back that domino goes when they fall. You know, Jesse, I'm not sure. Um, if there's one thing that I want to get... Oh, what? I'm missing... Hold on. I'm missing a camera. Uh, there, there's one thing that I, I want to uh, work on in the future is to be able to program uh, the PICs for these Brazilian style boards and even beyond that um, some of the uh, who other who else has PICs uh, Orion's and the older Orion's I think did you know any of the PIC I, I want to be, have the knowledge and know how to be able to program them um, I thought about asking tar amps if it's possible to be one of their providers here in the Pacific Northwest for components um to the public but uh, i'm not sure how far they want to step into that they probably won't because it is proprietary stuff but uh, that is one thing that i would love to do is be able to program these pics uh let's see here uh, yes you're correct uh the uh the ic3 the driver is on the 12 volt rail 
So, and really, yeah. Uh, so the thing too, though, is the the PIC, you know, works with everything else, um, you know, and throttles the throttles. I shouldn't even say that. Regulates the way it should. Um, the thing is, uh, what was that? Rewrite a new PIC. That PIC to, to read and rewrite to a new PIC. Oh, oh, yeah, just to rewrite. I, I thought you were talking about putting a different kind of drive in. Um, but yeah, that uh, IC3 is on the 12 volt line. Uh, where was I? Where was I? Oh, see here. Um, I'm looking at uh, not my cup of tea, but I do know some stuff. Yeah, if you you know ever come across information on PICs, uh, that is something I want to look into because uh, that's why I have you know, uh, several PICs on hand. Um, I order a few here and there from tar amps as needed, uh, but I would like to be able to uh, not have to wait, you know, a week or two to get a PIC in if, if the amplifier is in need of a PIC. Um, turnaround times is very important to me. So the good old 1404s, But, uh, but yeah, I figured I would, uh, you know, put a video out and help people from pulling their hair out and then, uh, have an amplifier sitting around waiting for a PIC to get installed. Or if you have spare 8K boards, that's one board I don't have. I think I have two spare Smart 5s and a spare 12K, but I don't I don't have an 8K. And another thing on these uh, amplifiers are uh, the transistors. So I'm going to show you, I've shown this before in the past, but I like to keep this information, you know, fresh and updated. Um, these boards, the transistor, you know, lays flat on the heat sink, lays flat to the board. Uh, but you'll notice mm, these aren't bad, but some people, they'll slide that leg of that transistor in the board and then bend it right over. And then uh, you'll get fatigue cracks on the legs. So what I do is... I slide the transistor in the hole and then just bit by bit I'll slide that transistor down and bend it and what it does is it makes a U shape in the leg. Now that U shape there will reduce your stress fractures on your transistor legs. I should have hire someone just to go through and just bend all my transistors for me. Um, but uh, but that's what I do is every transistor gets the U-shaped legs. We don't like returns, and I've been saying that forever. Um, every amplifier that leaves this place is tested, fully tested. I get that question a lot. Do you test your amps? Well, yes, I run a business. I would never send an amp out that has not been tested. Uh, it kind of it kind of baffles me when I'm when I hear that. Uh, but yes, every amplifier is tested. Every amplifier gets my utmost attention to detail because I don't like to have it come back. I do have a warranty period. My warranty period is ninety days and only on the work that I performed. In other words, if I give you a brand new power supply, and it's brand new, remember, and it's came in from, you know, a short, 
but I do not repair the output section, or not repair, if I don't do any work in the output section and you blow up the output section and then send it back in saying that my power supply burn up your output section, I'm probably going to deny your warranty. <laughs> so, um, I only warranty what I work on. If you want me to rebuild the amp, what I call head to toe, rebuild you tell me, please rebuild my amp head to toe. And then what I'll do is I will rebuild the output section and I will rebuild the power supply section. But if you don't ask me to rebuild your amplifier head to toe, I will repair what is blown and of course fully tested before it leaves. I only go down to 1 ohm. I will not go down any lower unless you are on a 12k or a half ohm smart 5 um, then i will go down to half because it's rated for half so i have to test them down to half but otherwise 98 percent of every amplifier that leaves this place is tested down to one ohm one two three four one two three four four and four sixteen one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen why how does that work out guys every time every single time oh my gosh one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen what's the rule of thumb guys for transistors in parallel sets Uh, 1404, huh? Okay, hold on. Never fear. Why? I don't have. Do I have? I might have gotten lucky. Do I have a match? BW61, I do not. Rule of thumb for transistors, guys. Oh, I probably don't have many viewers on a Friday night, but that's okay. So I will tell you, the rule of thumb for transistors is you always have matching transistors in parallel sets. So I have 15 transistors. You have four transformers. Let's see uh, if everyone's... Same batch code, yes, sir. 100%. You 100% correct on that. Same batch code. Um, yeah, same batch code is absolutely correct. I just had to put that out there in the chat. 100% correct. <clears throat> It's a rule of thumb though. So don't get me wrong, your amplifier will still work just fine with all of them mismatched. But I think the question will come down to how long is it gonna last? So again, everything goes back to returns, liabilities and returns. I will do everything I can in my power to make sure that the amplifier I send you does not come back. I do not like to work on the same amp twice. So what I did, since I had 15 transistors and I need 16 total, is we have four transformers. You're going to have two high, two low, even though they're not high and low. Or what other people call them, push and pull. Either really they're not push and pull. It's on or off. Um, but you can see I have, oh, you can't see. Oh, well, guys, wh who's running the cameras in this show? Oh, my gosh, where am I? Where am I? Oh, I'm way over there. Oh, let me let me show you what I got going on here, if I can. On this fine Friday night, I know most other people be going out right on Friday nights. Well, 
try running a business and doing that. Uh, let's see here. Just right off the corner. There we go. All right. So I have four transistors here. These were the group of 15. Well, minus one. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then I have four here. And then people are going, well, why do you have four separate transistors? Well, I'm going to take those four, since it's a different batch code than these, and use them on one transformer. Will it cause any issues? Nope, not at all. Not unless these transistors are way different than the originals. Which then, you know, you guys are going to have to you know, bust out your little transistor tester here. Uh, not the one I want to use. I mean, you never know. The specifications could be so far off that one you don't, don't want to use them. Uh, so we are 3.18 volts at 10 nanofarads. I do not look at the RDS on this really. These are just way too... F yeah. I look at the capacitance and the voltage. Your threshold. So 10 nanofarads at 3 volts. Is those. And then let me check these. 10 nanofarads at 3 volts. So these are going to be 10 nanofarads. Look at that. Almost spot on. 10 nanofarads at 3.09 volts. So that's what I'm doing is I'm making sure that the four that I choose for a single transformer is going to be pretty much the same as the other three transformers. I don't want an unbalanced load going across the power supply. Uh, where's the transistor curve tracer? Oh, can you see it? Oh, you can't quite see it. Where's the curve tracer? Uh, hold on, Jesse. Let me show you. Uh, if you can see it. Let me, let me move the camera here real quick. There it is. Way back in the corner over there on the other bench is my curve tracer. My DIY curve tracer at that. Yeah. Oh, I'm a huge fan. Uh, you got yourself a high performance class AB amplifier. Um, and you have a, you have a client that is very, very particular on sound. You want to match your, uh, you want to match your pre drivers. At least in my opinion, of course, everything I say on this, any of my videos is all my opinion. It's all based on my own experience. But yeah, Jesse, it's right over here. <laughs> Sitting with my uh, tech, tr uh, my Tektronics. What is that? A twenty-two fifteen twenty? Yeah, twenty-two fifteen scope. But yeah, so yeah, I have my curve tracer over there. I ha also now have my board that uh, tests the MIC gate drivers. And I thought there was one more board I just finished up. There's a, there's a third test board I just finished up, I thought, or I'm working on. I can't really remember. Uh, but I do have, yeah, a couple projects over there. My projects are never ending. <laughs> so I have a pair of old Tektronix curve traces. One works, one for parts. Oh, you have an actual Tektronix curve tracer? Oh, that's interesting. I have a DIY tracer that uh, just I it hooks up to my analog scope over there and see once you bend the legs what I do is I put my finger underneath the board and as soon as I feel that the leg pop through the board that's as far in as I'm gonna go with it And this is how fast you can rebuild a power supply once you get the signaling taken care of. See, it's very important to have the proper signals. Uh, bad signals uh, equals dollar signs. So you don't want any bad signals. You know, we all have to watch our, what do you, what's that, uh, the bottom line, is that what we call it? Um, anyone that is 
watching this video if you are a customer of mine, of mine you may see my prices for 2023 have increased ever so slightly um Yeah, ever so slightly they've increased. Eighty-two W five, eighty-two W five. Um, so now like a sixteen K. Like a Crossfire 16K, a full rebuild on a Crossfire 16K, you're going to be upwards of about $500 to, to rebuild them for 2023. So uh, I did have to change my prices around just a little bit. Only from because of the cost of the parts. Um, there. Yeah, only because of the cost of the parts has gone up, I don't want to say quite a bit, but pretty substantial. Uh, the uh, TPS 7A6601 IC. Holy cow, have you guys seen the price of those still? Un unbelievable. I cannot believe the cost of those. And the thing is, is a lot of these amps use that chip. So... It really is a really is a bummer, but uh, you know it's stuff like that. I have to increase my prices. Uh, the MIC gate drivers are higher voltage. Um, you know I'm not sure. Uh, I'm I don't know what the specification is for the MIC gate driver, the 4452, uh, which you will find on the SNI boards. A lot of the SNI, I think it's on all SNI boards. Uh, don't quote me on that. Majority of the SNI boards use the MIC drivers. Uh, so anyone that's doing SNI repairs, yeah, I would stock up now on your on your uh, MIC 4452s, because I know in early 2022 they were absolutely hard to get. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, two of them. I'll send you a link in the email. Hey, thanks, Jesse. All right. Taco, the FR301 is warmed up. Let me just flip this board over. So I can get this soldered up. Let me give you a view here that's not completely too obnoxious. Besides me and my gray hair. Um, and the way I flip it over allows all the transistors to rest in place so they don't fall out of the board. You kind of learn a groove. <laughs> uh, and you can see my little marking here, output OK from when I diagnosed the amplifier. I always, uh, I charge by the job and not by the hour. So anytime you send in an amplifier, it'll, it will get diagnosed first for a quote. Uh, and then from there, it goes into queue for repair. And I do, I don't know if I have the links down below in the description for any of the stuff that I'm using, uh, but I do have my Amazon affiliate links if you guys are interested in knowing what I use, um, the material and equipment. I was kind of hoping Cliff would pop up. Got something to show him. But I, uh, hey Cliff, if you're in here, give me a holler. And I'll show you other guys too. I'm not sure if any of my viewers use the uh, Hacko, the FR301. But uh, if you do, raise your hand if you despise cleaning the, the cleaning pins and the tips and plugged tips and got a little bit of a hack for you guys that'll help save you from pulling your hair out 
like finding a bad PIC. I'll show you here in just a second. Let me get this one side soldered up. So what I do is I solder one leg of the transistor just to hold it in place. It, what it, it's doing is giving me my height. And then I'm going to go around and I'm going to bend them all into shape. Where I want it, how I want it. I'm looking for straight. Sometimes my glasses will play tricks on me and they end up, they'll end up soldering these crooked. Uh, I attempted to go with contacts, oh, what, um, last month, and that was a miserable failure. <laughs> my my vision's just too bad for for that to work. So I am stuck with the glasses for now. But as you can see, I always use my big irons to do my soldering for uh, trans primary transistors. It just has more heat. And you already have it next to you, so it takes two seconds to heat up the uh, FR301. And then if you have any solder bridges by accident, it's really easy to hit it with the uh, trigger and pull the solder bridge. It's just a all around easy way to solder components. I don't like doing it for the smaller components because it does bridge really easy. Um, but the bigger components, oh yeah, all day long. And then what I do is I take my tweezers and I will pull the transistor out to match the rest. Because you gotta remember, I have an insulator that's gotta go up underneath these. So I'm just gonna pull it just a little bit away from the board. Roll this around and do it again. And this solder here, this is, um, it says it's got lead in it. I would probably say it doesn't have a lot of lead. It says it's a 6040. I don't believe it's a 6040, <laughs> uh, but it works really good at uh, soldering up big primary traces. So can't complain there. I would rather use this solder than the uh, Kester 44 due to cost. And believe it or not, I think this solder melts at a little higher temperature so it'll you know this solder will withstand heat a little bit longer than like the kester 44. this almost is like a lead free solder but again you know you can find it down below um, on my amazon affiliate links i do believe i think i included that in the description if not let me know and um, when I edit I will if I edit I usually don't edit my live streams I will include that then again I just go through and make sure they're straight before I solder the rest of the legs down. And on a good run, on a good day, I could probably get uh, three for sure. I can do three in a in my in my work day. Um, possibly I could do four of these in a work day. Um, you'll get to a point where you're proficient enough that you will be able to repair an amp relatively quick because you already know what you're looking for, and you already know what you got to change. 
and you already know you're going to be wearing thermal paste. Ugh, can't stand thermal paste. And then again, I'm going to grab my tweezers. Wrong set of tweezers. I have a blunt set, just a cheap set of tweezers. I'll put it right in the hole and I will just pull ever so slightly just to get that transistor away from that board. Because remember, I bent that little U-shape in the legs, so it does allow me to manipulate it just a little bit. Is there a type of insulation pad you like to use as a replacement for when there are cracked or burnt? Some like glass. Some are like glass. I've seen white ceramic as well. Yeah, Jesse. Um, so, I, I do get this question quite a bit when it comes to insulators. I'm going to see how I'm trying to figure out how I can all put this in a line to make it real quick and easy. Um, uh, your alumina, so your white ceramic looking ones is actually, what is that? It's a aluma, alumina, it's not ceramic, it's a uh, aluminum substrate. It's the best at transferring heat, so keep that in mind, but it's thicker. So, uh, and you got, so you got to kind of know what you're working with and what amplifier you're repairing. And it resists high voltage. So there's that. Um, first, for thermal transfer, is going to be your, your ceramics. Uh, second, you're going to hear debate between the uh, micas and silicones. Now, I, I'm not a fan of mica. I never really have been. Some people will disagree and say, oh, mica's the best. I got micas laying everywhere. That's a mica. They're good. They work. Uh, they're sold in almost every amplifier, but then you have your silicones. So, this is a silicone insulator. Sorry guys, I know you're going to be seeing a mess piling up over here. So there's a silicone insulator. And again, there's a mica insulator. Now, if you were to take these both and set them on top of a hot transistor and put your fingers on there, which one do you think you're going to feel heat first on? That's going to help answer the question. I am not a mica fan, so I am a silicone fan. Excellent, excellent. I mean, the heat transfer on these silicones is quick. Now, this is probably going to be one thing that, you know, people are going to probably disagree on. But if there's, if there's something that they got going on overseas is they never stop. They never stop with their technologies. Um, now, those are thin insulators, though. I probably would not use those on high voltage applications. I would stick with your uh, micas and your uh, ceramics for your high voltage applications. Probably um, if you're over 400 volts, I would probably use ceramic or, mi or uh, micas. I probably wouldn't use the silicones. They do have some high voltage silicones that I do believe Silpad makes, but it's super, super expensive. All right, in business. That's what we call in business. So, the only thing this is missing is a pile of 10 ohm resistors. Right? Is that the 8K? Is 8K 10 ohm? Where's Cliff? Where, uh, Jesse, do you know? Are these 10 ohms? I pulled all these gate resistors off uh, and I did not write down if they're the four sevens or the tens. Does anyone know? Uh, uh, make me go look at the other computer. <laughs> I got uh, Jesse. Thank you. Oh yeah. Any day, any day, Jesse. 
uh, silicone, low voltage, best way in my opinion. Oh, oh, with good thermal paste. Don't get, don't get me wrong, you're gonna have to back it up with some good thermal paste. Um, this one is 4.5 watts, 4.5 watt thermal paste, which I I like, because um, I do recommend competition amps anyways, if you service once a year. So um, I use the silicones with that 4.5 watt thermal paste. You don't know for the 8K? Uh, thanks, Jesse. Um, all right, give me two seconds, guys. I was way off. <laughs> I was way off on that. Oh my gosh. Sheesh. What? No way. Hold on. This isn't the ES900, is it? Oh, MD, MD, AK. RMs, MD, AK. Uh, R50. R9, R9, yep, sure is. All right, guys, so the uh, tar amps, I'm so sorry, it must, it must be late. The MD8K is 3.3 ohms for the 1405s. Yeah, I know. Let's, uh, let's do our videos earlier, right? All right, so what do we got? But I say we had 16. But yeah. And this is why it's sometimes it's so much harder to do a video than uh uh, not doing versus not doing a video because uh, sometimes these repairs can get a little tricky when you have a camera going. Multitasking, is that what we call it? Multitask. Worst spot ever to put a gate resistor. What is that? Coming Christmas. I guess no one said I had to see eye to eye with the engineers. But yeah, otherwise, it's the same old stuff here, guys. Uh, 4.7 or 47? Uh, 3.3. 3.3 ohms for the 1 ohm uh md8k so i was way off i mean it probably f yeah i guess that is pretty uh substantial it probably would have uh the driver would not have liked me very well 
So Yeah, the driver would have disagreed with me. I don't think the transistor would be very... They probably wouldn't care as much. Um, the 1404, I mean, I've seen used with all sorts of values. So I don't think it would have cared. But the driver would have cared. They got this gate resistor that is almost underneath the transformer. Wow. Huh. I'll get those comments. Oh, you do a lot of tar amps. Uh, yep, I do. Because I work for them. I don't, I don't say work for them. So I really don't work for them. I repair for them. So, so yeah, I do see a lot of tar amps. And if you look on their website, you'll see that I do believe, I don't think there's anyone else in the Pacific Northwest for tar amps. I don't think, at least not that I'm aware of. Yeah, you gotta love, gotta love SMD work. Especially when it's, I don't even know, are we approaching five o'clock? I think we are. Uh, let's see here, what do we got here? Just, uh, hey, Alan, hey, thanks for joining in. I just found your channel through my mate, Vince. Very important, thanks. Oh yeah, Vince is a great guy. Um, he'll pop in and comment on my, uh, on my videos every now and then, but, uh, uh, actually, Vince is the guy that really inspired me to uh, bring this repair content online. Um, I was already watching, you know, Vince with his repair stuff, and then I was like, huh, well, I wonder if people would benefit from amplifier repair. I didn't think people would because, I mean, really, who repairs amplifiers in this world? <laughs> so, uh, general, uh, general electronics repair, I can see a need for videos. Um, I, I never really personally, you know, thought of making videos for amplifier repair really until I started really watching Vince. Uh, I dislike when they put ICs down between rail caps. Yes, I feel like the... Uh, yes. Oh, any input on that? Um, yeah. Uh, I, I do have a trick. Of course I do. <laughs> uh, for doing that. But I, I, I don't know if... Um, but I'll take straight blades i'll take straight blades and i will slide that straight blade right down in between whatever it is i'm trying to solder just like that you can't quite see it but it is standing upright right here uh, acting as a shield to the surrounding components and then of course these the straight blade also absorbs heat from passing so Who's Vince? My mate Vince. Oh yeah, my mate Vince. He's a great, great guy. Um, but that's what I would do there, uh, Jesse, is if 
find uh, use something straight blades or something as a heat barrier uh, in between the rail caps and the IC that you're trying to do. Uh, Stetson kind of comes to mind. I think it's Stetson that does something similar like that. Uh, but yeah, or even, what is that, the 12K where the drivers are right in the middle over here? Yeah, use a slide a straight blade right down in there on each side and then use your heat gun, pull the IC off. Good to go. Don't use your heat gun to put ICs back on though. Ah, you can, just <laughs> as a word of caution. Uh, let's see here. Uh, who's Vince? Do you mind linking in the channel? Uh, I'm really not quite sure how I know how to do that, Jesse. <laughs> uh, oh, hey, tinfoil works good too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tinfoil works. The thing with tinfoil is it absorbs heat really, really fast. Um, so it gets thermal soaked pretty quick. Uh, straight razors uh, take a little longer to soak up that heat so it doesn't melt into the capacitors that they're leaning against. Tinfoil, though, I found heats up pretty quick. Where was I? Ah, gate resistors. Um, have you ever worked on a... Gig frack 1000? Um, uh, is that spelled correctly? G I G R A C? I'm not quite sure what that is. So, um, 5.5k, that's exactly what I should be seeing. You'll know when you don't have a gate resistor soldered correctly because you're not going to read the proper resistance value. And what's the proper resistance value on this, guys? I think that goes back to what we were discussing about over here. Your pull-down resistor is what? I probably misspoke earlier. The pull-downs, I should say, on this are not... Hold on. Hold on. Let me see here. Five, five. They are 10K pull downs. So hold on, give me two seconds, two seconds. Oh no, 5601. I'm sorry, I'm thinking of the two 10K resistors over here by the PIC. So these are uh, 5600 ohm, 5.6K resistors, pull downs. So you won't read, um, if you're checking a uh, gate source on your transistors, you will not read that pull down resistor if you did not solder your gate resistor correctly. So there's one side. Uh-oh, does that mean we're almost ready to power this up? Yeah, almost. I just gotta add a couple more resistors here. Um, it's a power mixer. A power mixer. Uh, power mixer. No, I have not. Power mixer? You mean like a... Um, like a sound mixer? Or are we talking like a process, food processor mixer? Sorry, my electrician days are kind of <laughs> uh, shining. So when I think of mixer, I think of big, you know, food processing mixers that uh, I used to deal with. Oh, but uh, Jesse, the link in that channel, I'm not sure uh, how to do that. Again, I'm not, I am not software savvy. <laughs> um, uh, but if you look up my mate Vince on YouTube, uh, he'll pop right up. He's a great guy. Great, great guy. Very friendly. Um, uh, I support him. I'm a Patreon supporter. Uh, for him. Just all around good guy. Let me see here. Where am I? Uh, uh, with the mic inputs and sliders and it has a preamp on the inside. Oh, so it's a sound mixer. Um, I 
I have I actually have a sound mixer here, a 16 channel sound mixer that I am working on. Um, that particular mixer, no, I have not serviced. I am just now uh, working on bringing in uh, soundstage equipment as part of my business. So. Let's see here. How do I link? How do I... Oh. Ooh, I'm not sure. Engage with your audience? I am engaging with my audience. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I will look that up. I promise, guys. I promise I will learn how to link things in videos. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Nah, I just make myself feel old by talking. Oh. All right, so all those gate resistors are in place. Let's go ahead and solder up these gate resistors. But yeah, I've been getting so many phone calls about uh, repair of other equipment, um, especially TVs. I don't really want to get in the into the field of TV repair, uh, but I will entertain the idea of doing uh, sound equipment repair, like soundstage stuff. So that is another direction for 2023. I am headed in. Uh, for my business is to include a little broader line of uh, electronics. But again, it all comes down to, you know, availability of parts, what does it take, you know, what information, what kind of transferable skills do I have doing this will move on to, you know, soundstage equipment. So back to line level work is what I call it. Sorry guys, as I have to keep my eyes peeled on these resistors here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four, four, and four, and four. Oh. My goal. Oh, nope. Oh. See what I was doing right there? See how I, I well, you can't see because that darn scope. Uh, let's go like this. Let's go like this. Let's go like this. All right. I have a resistance value here, 4.4 megs. What does that tell you? <laughs> uh, uh, 5.5, that's what I'm looking for. 5.5, 5.5. .5. 5.5, it's actually 5.6. Uh, 5.5, I'm just reading the first two digits, 5.5. Remember, this is showing me that I did a proper job on my gate resistors, which I didn't do. I've got one that I did not get, uh, 4.8 megs. So I know that that gate resistor is not soldered. It's because I am working from a distance. That is a little hard for me to see. I know, right? Oh, it is not soldered there. I always use a meter. I uh, 5.5. There it is. Always, I always use a meter. I can't stress this enough. A, a resistance value will absolutely tell you the health of a circuit. Look forward to those vids. Uh, uh, hey, thanks, Alan. 
Oh yeah. Um yeah, parts came in. So uh parts did come in for the I am working on a crown which I think is JBL. Uh soundstage amplifier and a is it a crown line filter? I'm not sure. Uh, but those are two items that I will be doing a video on if I feel confident enough that I can tackle the situation. So um, if I can't feel confident enough in doing that, then I'm not going to bring that line of business in. So, uh, yeah, so that's where I'm going to leave that. But I do feel pretty confident that I can resolve the problem with the uh, equipment that I have. So there shouldn't be any issues there. It's all about confidence, right guys? All right. Well, there's all our transistors. Uh, what model crown and I see here. Oh, I see here. In my opinion, Pro Audio 19 inch rack mount amps are modular, easy to work on. Look for those uh, to those vids. Uh, what model crown amp? Um, they're in the they're in a another room. Um, I don't know what model it is, and I don't think I don't know if it's crown. Don't call me on that. I there's symbol. There's a symbol on it of a crown, but I think it says JBL on it. It's it goes in a big. It goes in a big speaker. <laughs> uh, I really don't know anything about uh the uh soundstage stuff so um i was able to successfully diagnose it though and find the faults that's why i ordered the parts and i think i can successfully repair them uh the line filter had a blown fuse at the uh uh for those the uh those thermal resistors what are those called thermistors they had a thermal fuse in between some thermistors that was open so i'm assuming i'm going to be able to fix it all right power supply is rebuilt we know we have a good pic drive i'm just checking the positive and negative to make sure i have any shorts across my transistors which i don't i do see capacitors charging which is gonna be these filter capacitors here charging. And then I'm just gonna double check. I already, I already saw this side, we're five, five, right? Yeah, five, five. Now, this is good to go. I believe this is gonna power right up. No, it's not good to go, you know why? Oh, fail, oh. I done failed you guys tonight. I was wanting to power this up, but you know what? I can't power this up. We're missing one thing. Oh, darn it. Ah, oh, it's 5.30, yeah, because I'm going to have to go here real soon. What are we missing, guys? The What are what am I missing to be able to fire this thing up? That is the word of the day. Um, I believe without a doubt in my mind it will start. But I will continue on with what I was doing up to the point of powering up. Uh, so... I know this is good to go. I've already checked the resistance values here. Resistance values are good. I don't have any uh, gate source shorts and I don't have any drain source shorts, obviously. So next thing I'm gonna check is the output section. Now I've already checked this before because I've already diagnosed this amp for, uh, for quote, but just to show you, we are 10.8K uh, for the low side and we are 11.18k for the high side those are key numbers guys this is an md 8k one ohm version low side output 10.83k gate to source and then your high side 11.18k gate to source that will be the same for all MD8Ks for the one ohm version. I just wanted to put that out there on video if for anyone to refer back to about what the resistance value should be. 
All right. Now, let's do the other side. So, this side, 10.8K. Actually, it's 10.84K. 10.83, there it is. Again, should be the same. There will be some slight variance between the two halves. Some, but not a lot. And then we're going to go check the high side. The high side, 11.17K. Hey, thanks, Jesse. You're, you're right. You're on top of this. <laughs> yes, there's no drive I see. Oh, gosh. Darn it. I have to do some trace work on this, so I will not have that IC done tonight. <sighs> Big sigh. But, sorry, that's my meter yelling at me. The Uni T meters. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up both my meters. I'm going to rip out that beeper. No, I can't because it's my buzzer. Just kidding. Uh, but, the, again, the resistance values will tell you everything. 11.18K, high side, 10 point, was it 10.7, 10.6K, low side. Now I'm going to go to diode mode. Five point seven seven volts forward, low side. Five point seven seven volts forward, high side. Do you see the problem here? I mean, there's really not a problem. <laughs> but do you see the problem? Now, let's say you had a fault in the high side drive. Um. but not a direct short fault. Let's say there's something just off just enough on the high side drive. And now people that deal with the this particular style, not particular amp, but style of amplifier knows how is the high side gate driven. And this is why I don't use diode mode. Whoops, backwards. All right. Oh, well, now that I've charged it up, it's going to show me different. So now that I've charged it up, now it's changing. All right, 0.25 forward. Yeah, see, no, that's not going to help me because it's moving. It's moving. Oh, there it is, 5.77. The other one should be 5.77. Yeah, 5.77. Um, if there was a problem in the high side drive that is bootstrapped, that's a keyword right there, you may not see that problem using forward voltage. You may not. I'm not saying you will or won't. You may not. But using the resistance of the circuit, you know right off the bat, if you have something that's just not right, because your resistance value will be different. It'll be not what you expect. 11.18, as we had said. Because I expect a different resistance value between the low side and the high side. If I was using diode mode and went through and did all my diode checks, it all had forward voltage of what was that point five seven seven volts forward, and I had a problem in a bootstrap, would that bootstrap problem show up on a forward voltage check? Uh, not sure. May or may not. I like to make sure that when I fire an amp up, I don't lose anything. When these go up, they go up quick and very loud. Hey, my conda, there it is. Ah, good to see you here. Good to see you here. Everyone, welcome, my conda. There he is, one of my moderators. And another great guy in this world. But yeah, sadly, I have no IC to drive the power supply. Oh, no, I do have it. I don't have it installed. Uh, if I didn't have to do trace work, I'd put one on real quick. But I have to rebuild the output traces on that. So, all I can say, guys... Um, I would say take my word that it works, um, but 
what you can see speaks louder than words. So, yeah, I'm not going to be able to fire this up. Boo, I know, boo on Todd. Um, okay, so before I have to leave you guys because it is 533 here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, good to see you live. Just another one of all you. Uh, just another one of all of you here learning. Yeah. <laughs> good to see you. Hey, thanks, Mike. Yeah. Um, it's taken me a little while to get this equipment all set back up after my laptop failure, but I think I finally got everything back the way it was. So I'm good to go back on the streams. Um, even though I think the streams do hurt my channel, um, for some weird reason, the statistics are a little different when I do live streams than when I post a video. I was really debating about recording and posting versus going live. But I wanted to be able to talk with you guys and answer any questions. So I think going live really outweighs the, uh, outweighs the risk of you know, whatever live streams do to your channel. So I wanted to show you a little something about the Hakko FR301 and the cleaning pins versus the tips. You know, these tips will drive you crazy. For anyone that uses the Hakko FR301 and you put a new tip on, and over time, if you notice that your pin will no longer fit in the hole of your desoldering tip but yet you're grinding through it and grinding through it and you're like oh man it's like something is like bent or wrong or something in the tip well i have a trick for you on your on your cleaner pins this is a one millimeter pin um it's a one millimeter tip that i have in so I have a one millimeter pin and I have a 0.8 millimeter pin. And when you buy your pins, they're flat. They're real blunt right on the end. So if you take your one millimeter pin or even your 0.8 millimeter pin and you take your good old side cutters and you just clip just an edge right off the edge, right off the end of that, it actually makes it into a slight little drill bit. yeah yeah um yeah sorry about that mike uh i don't know i don't know the really the back end of how the logistics work of these things <laughs> uh but uh, i'm glad you're here though i really am but if you clip the end of your cleaner pin it'll actually drill squeak 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 right through that carbon buildup And that's what builds up on the in, right on the inside, right at the end of the desoldering tip. So if you clip that end and use it as a drill, you'll drill that stuff right out of there, and then your one millimeter pin will fit again. Uh, over time, I've had to go down to using the 0.8 millimeter pin because the hole would get plugged up with that fine carbon, and I could not get it out for the life of me until I cut a notch in the end of the cleaner pin. So that's my little trick of the day uh, for the Hakko FR301 desoldering gun. Um, uh, the replacement of the PIC on an MD8K and to always check your PICs before you proceed on repairs. Or at least check your PIC to know how you're going to quote the amp. If if you do this as a business, of course. Um, if you don't do it as a business, then you're going to learn the hard way. You're going to rebuild the amp, find you have a bad PIC, and then you're going to try to find a PIC. So that was the whole goal of this video. Uh, thermal paste everywhere. Was to uh, show people how they can prevent costly delays in amplifier repair. Uh, otherwise, I've got, I've got amplifiers for days. I, I think I'm at, uh, since 
that ruthless amplifier showed up. I am now at 32 or 31 amplifiers in queue. So two a day, two a day. We'll keep this business running three a day, preferably, but two a day is what I'm going to have to do to keep up. And that's why I'm so far behind today, and that's why I'm late today. But yeah. So guys, if you have any questions, please uh, leave them down in the comments. If you know anyone that's got questions on amplifiers before they burn their amplifier up, have them give me a call. Call Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service here in Central Washington. I will answer my phone six days a week. Um, on Sundays, they are on silent. But if you leave me a message, I may get back to you. And what else? Uh, descriptions are down below in the description descriptions of the uh, tools and items and stuff that I use down below my affiliate links um, other than that as I say stay safe guys that's the biggest thing stay safe these amps will carry enough current to put you in a hospital stay safe if you charge this up discharge your rails discharge them you can see, or if you look at the, my top video little camera here, you can see a really big brown. This thing is huge. That is a discharge resistor for the rails. That's a big, big resistor. Discharge your rails. Keep your fingers safe. So, I thank you guys for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. I see I'm over 2,000 subscribers. I thank you all for your support on my channel. Um, I'm here for you guys. So, Stay safe. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, guys.